But anyway, so one chronically elevated insulin causes insulin resistance. Well, let's 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 pause on that moment mm -hmm. for a moment because I think it's a it's a really really important point because this is uh, the crux of the matter. So, and a lot of doctors simply don't understand this, and I think it's actually crucial. Insulin resistance, we all agree, everybody in the world pretty much agrees, is a problem. If you're insulin resistant, then you're much a higher uh, risk of all kinds of other diseases, heart disease, cancer, and all this stuff. So if you take the next step and you say, okay, insulin resistance is a problem in everybody, um, what causes it? And like nine out of 10 doctors will be like, we don't know. It's like, mm. what the hell, right? You don't know. So insulin resistance being such a huge problem, and it's been, you know, syndrome X, Gerald Reven identified it like at least by the 70s. So we're talking about 50 years of sort of medical research. And you're telling me that, and, and it's, you know, three, four, five times higher diabetes is three, four, five times higher than it was in the 70s. Um, in certain countries, it's like 10 or 20 times higher. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like you have this huge epidemic. You've been studying it for 50 years. You've known it, insulin resistance is a problem for 50 years. So what causes it? And the answer is, we don't know. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, do you have any idea? And again, I've asked lots of doctors this, by the way. They are like, I have no idea. I asked trainees this and they have no idea because they've never been taught. They, and I'm always thinking, why don't you actually think about this problem? Because if you think that the problem is hyperinsulinemia, right, which is too much insulin causes insulin resistance, then it's it's a it's an important link because if you say too much insulin causes insulin resistance, therefore the the answer for a lot of these problems is to help lower insulin. And how are you going to do that? Because up till recently, there were really no drugs that did that. Ozempic now can do that, but mm -hmm. in a different manner, right? So that's such a crucial point that, that, that the hyperinsulinemia, the too much insulin problem is, is what we should be focused on because again, as you point out, it's been done. Like if you want to, if you think too much insulin causes insulin resistance, do a study, take people, infuse insulin, see what happens. You know what? Yep. Every single study shows they get insulin resistant. You can even take insulinomas, which are these rare insulin producing tumors. You take them out. So you take a condition where you have too much insulin and they return it back to normal. What happens? That insulin resistance completely disappears. And it's like, okay, well. Yeah. I, there's something you know, so intuitive about it. If, so if you just think obvious. about it for a moment, a, a person very quickly comes to the the oh I see uh, it's just a, it's an inconvenient um, fact because it challenges so much of how yeah. these issues are treated, but too much of something causes a resistance to that something. That is how biology. That is one of the fundamental biological principles. If there's an incessant stimulus, the cell, the body by extension, or the tissue by extension, then the body by extension will attempt to reduce the response to that to that signal, assuming just kind of placing it into the background and it becomes deaf to the signal. In exactly. other words, in this case, it becomes insulin resistant. And, that, and that's important because this is a sort of fundamental biological principle and it's a protective response, right? Yep. So the cell is protecting itself from too much insulin by becoming resistant. And you see this everywhere, right? You, 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 if you're, you know, listening to loud music, what happens? You go deaf. Why? Because your, your ear needs to protect itself from the loud noise. So therefore it goes a little deaf. So and that, even still, Jason, if you'll allow me to insert into that metaphor, what do you do to try to continue to hear the music? You continue to turn the volume up. Yeah. And I mean, bringing it back to insulin resistance, it becomes this vicious cycle where the pattern of eating, lots of refined starches and sugars, eating so frequently is pumping up the volume to yeah. get to some early 90s music um, references. <laughs> but then it's, you're becoming deaf. So, so, and then what do you do? I wanna still hear this. The cell wants to continue to respond to insulin. And so the body will start to have this compensatory response and increase insulin, which further promotes insulin resistance. And so it becomes a vicious cycle. Exactly. But, the but at the time, it seems obvious that you should pump up the volume, right? Yep. Because it's like, hey, I can't hear. Yeah, I need to pump up the volume, but that's the exact wrong thing to do. 
And in fact, yep. that's what we've done, right? If insulin is too high, it causes insulin resistance. We saw that insulin resistance and said, we need to pump up the insulin. So we gave people insulin. We told them yeah. to eat six times a day. We told them to eat lots of low fat, high starch foods. That is the equivalent of making that insulin higher so that you don't have, you overcome this resistance, but it actually makes the underlying problem worse, not better. You actually have to do the opposite even though it seems a little counterintuitive, if you will, at the time, but it's, it's, it's actually the only way. Uh, and the only way really is to look at that sort of underlying root cause of, of uh, disease, which is that, okay, too much insulin, let's lower insulin, as mm -hmm. opposed to, oh, well, the insulin isn't responding, let's pump up the insulin, which is such a, you know, it's, it seems so obvious to you and me, but unfortunately, I think like 99% of the medical inst institution thinks it, you should just sort of give more insulin sort of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, They've it's really been how trained. the textbooks are written. Yeah, yeah. And the way they justify it is, and I say this with sympathy, uh, lest it sound like either of us is being too harsh, you only know what you've been taught. And so unfortunately, these clinicians and the average individual has been taught that glucose is the marker that matters most. And if you see metabolic health and its consequences when it goes poorly through a glucose-centric lens, then it is easy to justify pushing up the insulin even more or not even measuring the insulin, as we both know is, is more common, is common. It's common that a clinician doesn't even think about measuring the insulin, that they will just look at that glucose and they say, that's the marker that matters. So we just need to lower that glucose at all costs even if it means increasing the insulin because they have no awareness of one, what insulin levels actually are in the patient, or two, they have no appreciation that chronically elevated insulin is highly pathogenic.